Nucleotides are the building blocks of nucleic acids. When we're talking about nucleic acids, these are really the largest polymers that we do have inside any living cells. And nucleic acids, we have two different kinds, DNA and then RNA as well. So regardless of which one we're talking about, they are gonna be made up of these nucleotides. So we can think of the nucleotides as the monomers and the nucleic acids are going to be the huge polymers. And we're talking about hundreds of millions of these nucleotides linked together in many cases. So as we've done with other molecule types, we want to understand the general structure of the nucleotide here. Nucleotides, we're just going to abbreviate them NT. And when we're talking about the three parts of the nucleotide, they really do have three different parts. First of all, they have what we refer to as a pentose sugar. And penta means five. So really what we're talking about here is we're talking about a sugar that has five carbons to it. So if we draw a look at that pentose sugar, it is going to have um, a pentagon form to it. We have an oxygen embedded in the ring. There is going to be another carbon up here which also has a hydroxyl group coming off of it. And then we would have lots of hydroxyls hanging off as well because this is a carbohydrate. Recall that the monosaccharides, they can have a ring form and that ring form is going to have an oxygen embedded in the ring and then we're gonna have lots of hydroxyl groups. Now we can number these carbons that we have in the ring, and this does become important later on, so I'm gonna go ahead and number the carbons for us. This is going to be the number one carbon here. This will be two, three, four, and five. So you can see that we do have five different um, carbons, and that's the pentose sugar part of it. Now, depending on whether we're talking about DNA or RNA, the actual sugar is a little bit different. The one that I've drawn here at the moment happens to be ribose. So this would be the one that you would find in um, RNA, and that's where the R in RNA comes from. And then if we were talking about DNA, really the only difference is that in DNA, we don't have this particular hydroxyl group. So that's where the deoxyribose comes from. So now I am looking at um, the DNA form at the moment. So this is deoxyribose now. Second, the second thing that we're going to have is going to be a nitrogenous, what we call a nitrogenous base. The nitrogenous base is called that because it does contain a lot of nitrogen. And there are different options that we have for our nitrogenous bases. Um, they have longer names. We have adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. And we do have uracil as well. So there's actually five different bases. And these bases are really what makes the nucleotides of DNA different from each other, and then the ones in RNA different from each other. So there are four different ones you can find in DNA, four different ones you can find in RNA. The nitrogenous base is always going to be connected to this number one carbon. And at the moment, I'm just gonna draw it like this because I'm not gonna draw all the structures of those bases. But that's where the base is going to be located at in this overall um, nucleotide. The third thing that we're going to have is going to be a phosphate functional group. And so the phosphate functional group is always going to be attached at the number five position. And this is really why it was important to number the carbons. So the phosphate will go right here. So it will actually get attached right here. Um, and we'll have I just draw some of that for you. Okay, here's gonna be my phosphate group. And so that is the general structure of a nu nucleotide. We'll have a bunch of these that get hooked together to make very, very large molecules. Like we said, several million or hundred million of these will be joined together. This over here is the variable part if we're talking about ones that we would find in DNA. Okay, so that's the variable part. In DNA, it's going to have, and I'm just gonna write the letters here rather than spell out the whole names. Um, those are the four bases that we would find in DNA. 
And in DNA, this is the sugar, the correct sugar. That sugar is deoxyribose. It's always gonna be that in DNA nucleotides. And then we can see the phosphate group as we've drawn it. Now, when we do start to join these together, we will always be joining such that it is um, the phosphate group of one that gets connected right here. So this picture that we have here does a nice job of showing us how these nucleotides are going to look once they are all joined together. So as we look at this picture, if we just um, look at this top nucleotide, the top nucleotide would run from here um, up to this point. And this is really just showing that this molecule would continue on because they are really large. So this is the phosphate group. Here we can see that. Here in the middle would be um, the sugar. So this is our sugar. And this area up here, all of this would be that nitrogenous base. Now again, if we numbered the carbons, this would be um, number one, two, three, four, and this would be the number five carbon. Now, whenever we start to hook together these molecules, the phosphate of one, so this phosphate is going to connect to the hydroxyl group of the sugar on the three prime carbon. So the way that we word this is we say the five prime phosphate, we always call the phosphate the five prime end of the nucleotide because the phosphate is always connected to the five prime carbon. The five prime phosphate of one nucleotide connects to the three prime hydroxyl of the next nucleotide. Okay, so that's where our connections are going to be. This right down here would be one of those connections as well. And then here we would have another one of those connections. All of these connections, we do have a name for them. These are what we call phosphodiester bonds or phosphodiester linkages. A lot of times they are called. And so if we are hooking together millions of these, you would have quite a lot of phosphodiester linkages. Another thing to point out is notice that the bases are not involved any whatsoever in joining together the individual nucleotides. They really just kind of stick out to the side. And then another thing that's often referred to when we look at the resulting molecule is that this right here, and I'm just going to draw a line on it, this kind of zigzag, that is what we commonly refer to as the backbone. And notice that the backbone is just, um, if we were to start at the bottom, it's sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, and so on the whole way up. So we say that it's alternating sugars and phosphate groups that do make up the backbone of the molecule. And this would be standard for hooking together nucleotides of DNA and then also for hooking together nucleotides of RNA. If we were to look at the end result, and again, in this picture, we're really just looking at kind of the middle of one of these really large molecules. But if we did look at a whole molecule, one end would always have the five prime phosphate. And then the other end down here would always have the three prime, what we call the three prime hydroxyl right here hanging off of it. So we do always have two unique ends to any nucleic acid 